Hey guys, it's Justin here, and here we are back at it with another update on our Project Jeep Wrangler build series. Over the course of a few weeks, we've been making some smart upgrades to this Jeep Wrangler Rubicon JL to give it some more off-road capability without sacrificing its day-to-day -day practicality. Today, we're talking all about trail protection. Now, when most folks think trail protection, they often picture big tube bumpers and rock sliders, but we're heading somewhere way more important. We're focusing our attention on protecting this Jeep's engine, drivetrain, and chassis. After all, you can still drive home with a broken headlight, some scratched up paint, or a bashed up rocker. But good luck getting home with a broken transfer case, a bent drive shaft, or a cracked axle housing. And while Jeep already equipped this Rubicon with some factory skid plates, like to shield the gas tank and transfer case, if you're going to tackle any serious trails, you're going to want a whole lot more protection. So we went to the Artec Industries catalog and ordered up some armor plating to fit all over this Jeep. Starting with some Artec inner fenders front and rear, and then we're going to move under this thing and install a full belly pan and then add a skid plate to the Wrangler's e-torque battery unit, along with its Scout skid shield for the cab unit on the front axle. Installation is pretty easy too. In fact, we've already got this thing in the air, so let's get to work. We're going to start off our install by removing the front tire. Now this isn't necessary, but it'll make it a lot easier when we're trying to get into the inner fender well. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolts and then the plastic clips holding the fender well in. With the inner fender well out, now we're going to go ahead and remove the inner fender well support. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this clip and we're going to install the flag nut in here. So before we install our first piece of our inner fenders, we're going to loosen up these grounds and pull them together to make the inner fender fit better. Now we're going to go ahead and insert our flag nut and get our bolt started. We're going to run this bolt in and we'll leave it loose so we can get the rest of them started. So we went and got our inner fender well mocked into place so we can mark the holes so we can drill some holes and install our rib nuts. With the holes marked, we're gonna go ahead and pull this back out, drill the holes, and then install the rib nuts. With our holes drilled, now it's time to install our rib nuts. Now, we're gonna use this rib nut tool that Artec provided, and it works really well. Now, if you've never installed one of these or have some questions on installing them, Artec has a great video on their YouTube on how to use this. Now we can get this bolt tightened up on our panel and then install the inner fender well and tighten the rest of the bolts. With all our bolts started, now we're gonna go ahead and just make sure they're all tight. And with that, our inner fender well install is complete. Go ahead and repeat this on the other side for the other inner fender well. Now that we're all finished up with the front inner fender wells, let's do the back ones. So we're gonna start off our install by removing the tire. With our mud flap removed, now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the plastic clips holding the inner fender well in, and then drill the plastic rivets. With all the clips removed, now we're gonna go ahead and drill out all the plastic rivets. With all the plastic rivets removed, now we can go ahead and remove the fender. Now the rear fenders can be a little bit difficult to remove and you're really gonna have to yank on them, but don't worry, they will come out. Now that we have our fender removed, we can go ahead and start putting our inner fender well together. We're just gonna go ahead and take all these button head bolts and loosely assemble the fenders. Now that we have our fender loosely assembled, we can go ahead and drill our one optional mounting hole in the Jeep and get this thing installed. Now we're gonna take this drill template, line it up with this hole, 
kind of flatten it against the fender here and then mark it. We have a pilot hole started. Now we're gonna actually use a quarter inch drill bit. Now we're ready to insert our inner fender well, and we're gonna do that by pushing the back in first and then moving it into place. Now that we got it inserted, we can go ahead and start starting some hardware. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert our inner fender well. Go ahead and slide the back in first. And then you can pop the front in. And we're just gonna go ahead and loosely start all the bolts and then we'll come back and tighten them all. With all our bolts started up here, now we're gonna put these three in with the nuts and spacers. Now we can go ahead and start tightening all our hardware. Instead of reusing the stock plastic clips, we're gonna be holding our fenders on with quarter 20 bolts and rib nuts. After we installed our rib nuts, we went ahead and clicked our fender back on with just a couple of the body clips. Now we're gonna use quarter 20 bolts to fasten it all the way. And with that, our install is complete. Now you can go ahead and repeat this on the other side. So we've got our Jeep up in the air and now it's time to start removing some of the stock components. So we're gonna first start off by removing the stock skid plates because these things just don't offer the kind of protection that we really need. With this loosened, now we can go ahead and remove the factory skid plate. Now we're gonna start removing the gas tank skid plate. First thing we need to do is loosen the gas tank strap. Now with that loosened, we're gonna go ahead and just run all these out. We're not gonna take them all the way out because these actually hold the fuel tank in. Now with our tank lower down and our bolt all the way out of the other side of our gas tank strap, you can go ahead and remove it. And you're gonna do that by pulling it down and sliding it in here. Now we're gonna use some ratchet straps to hold up the factory fuel tank while we remove the skid plate. It's a good idea to do this when the Jeep tank is almost empty, it'll make it a lot easier. So what you're gonna wanna do once you get the strap slid through, you're gonna wanna work it back and forth around the bolts and stuff to where you can get it somewhere near the rear of the gas tank. Then we're gonna add a second one in front. Now with the strap back here, we're gonna go ahead and hook this one up and get it tightened up. Go ahead and hook it there. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide in our second strap. So with our gas tank now supported, we can remove the gas tank skid plate. So with all the bolts out, now you're gonna wanna grab a friend to lower down the gas tank skid plate. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our gas tank strap and install it. Before we install our stock cross member, we're gonna go ahead and throw this piece of rubber on here to prevent it from rubbing a hole in the gas tank.
With that installed, now we can go ahead and put the cross member in. Now we're ready to install our cross member. Now with that done, we can go ahead and remove our ratchet straps. Now that we have this cross member in, we can go ahead and remove this front one. With that front cross member removed, now we can go ahead and start mounting our skid plate. Now what we're gonna do is we're temporarily gonna put it in position, mark the hole for the fourth bolt, remove the skid plate, and drill the hole in the frame. To mount our skid plate, we're gonna go ahead and leave the passenger side of the cross member tight and remove the bolt out of the driver's side temporarily. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten the three bolts we put in so the skid plate's sucked up against the cross member and we can drill the fourth hole. So with our skid plate mounted and cinched up, we're gonna go ahead and mark our hole so we can drill it. We're gonna go ahead and drill our pilot hole with the skid plate in place, then we'll remove it and drill it to size. With our pilot hole drilled, now we can go ahead and remove the skid plate again. Now it's time to install our front engine skid plate mounts. And to do that, we're gonna remove this factory engine bolt and install the one Artec provided. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this mount put into place. And we're just gonna start the bolt and leave it loose until we get our skid plate attached. Now for the driver's side front skid plate mount, we're just gonna remove this bolt, add the bracket, and then reuse this bolt. So now we're ready to reinstall our skid plate. And to do that, we need to remove this bolt again. Go ahead and get a few of these started. And then we're gonna take this piece, insert it in the side of the frame, and that'll be our bolt hole for here. And we're gonna go ahead and leave all these slightly loose until the end of the install, and then we'll go ahead and tighten them all. Now that we got this into place, we can go ahead and install our engine skid plate. So we went ahead and ran these bolts in so this, it'll hold this thing in place and we can get the front mounts attached. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our skid plate stiffener brackets. On this side, it's a little tight to the exhaust so we're gonna use some flathead screws and in the other six holes, we're gonna use button heads. Now there is one of these on each side and you're gonna wanna tighten them up before you lift the skid plate in place because you won't be able to tighten the driver's side once it's all the way up. Now we're gonna slide our skid plate into place. Take a little bit of force to line it up. Oh, we'll get our bolt through. Now it's held into place, we can slip the other two bolts in and put our nuts and washers on the back. So with all four of those bolts started, we're gonna go ahead and leave them loose to the end, just like all the other hardware, and that'll help us get all the skid plates aligned. Now go ahead and install your first rear gas tank bracket. And we're just gonna leave these really loose cause that'll help us install our gas tank skid plate. Before we get our fuel tank skid plate installed, we need to go ahead and install this hanger bracket.
We're gonna go ahead and leave this loose like everything else and come back and tighten it once everything's installed. Now we're ready to put our gas tank skid in. And before we do that, we need to insert the four carriage bolts in the back. So we're gonna slide them through the holes and then put a piece of tape on the back of them so they don't slide back out on us. And you can go ahead and just leave this piece of tape on the inside during your install. Now our gas tank skid plate is ready to go into place. So before we put our skid plate in place, we need to go ahead and loosen this strap bolt so we can slide the skid plate under it. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of our hardware started. Starting off at the front and working our way back, with all the hardware installed, now we're gonna start tightening stuff. And we're first gonna tighten these and then these side skid plate bolts and just move our way back. Now it's time to install the skid plate for our e-torque unit. And we're gonna start that by removing this steel case from the outside so we can attach some prim nuts and then fasten the aluminum skid plate to it. And we're gonna do that by removing the three bolts on each side. So this brace protects the transmission lines that go to our e-torque unit that helps it maintain temperature. We already went ahead and unbolted it from the lines so we can move it up to the top of the cross member so we can use the other bracket Artec provided to sandwich this bracket. So it just had two 10 millimeter bolts holding it to the line. We're gonna go ahead and lower it down a little bit and move it into place. We'll come back later and attach this. We just wanted to get it out of the way for right now. Now let's go prep our battery skid plate so we can attach the aluminum piece from Artec. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our prim nuts with our riv nut tool in these six holes. If you're not sure how to do this, Artec has a great video on how to use their riv nut tool. With our prim nuts installed, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the battery case and then attach the skid plate to it. We're gonna go ahead and get this bracket out of the way so we can get the front bracket attached and it's not in our way hanging by the wires. So go ahead and put this bracket inside the cross member and bolt it in. Now go ahead and put the skid plate into place. Now we're gonna reuse some of the factory hardware and put two 10 millimeter bolts in these holes. Go ahead and reuse some of the factory hardware we removed to bolt this bracket into place. So now with our battery skid plate installed, we're ready to move on to our final piece of armor. And what we're gonna be installing is the Artec JL shield for our front central disconnect. And what this does is this disconnects the front axle to improve fuel economy. So what we're gonna do is remove the four bolts, take this off and install our new piece. It's really straightforward. Now this thing is a really tight fit, so we're gonna use our rubber mallet to kind of put it into place. Then we're gonna put our two bolts that Artec provided in the bottom. Then we're gonna reuse two of our factory bolts on the sides. Before we tighten the bottom ones up, we're gonna go ahead and get the other two started. And with that, our Jeep armor up is complete.
The Jeep, thanks to our tech, is now ready to take on whatever the trail throws at it. And at the very least, we hope this video stresses the importance of protecting the Jeep's chassis and drivetrain. From rocks and boulders to stumps and logs, you'll often find plenty of daunting obstacles whenever you're venturing off-road. And often the biggest dangers are under your feet. We're still not done with this Wrangler either. Stay tuned to the next episode where we head inside the cabin to add some interior protection and a few creature comforts to this Project Jeep build. And make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel. And while you're at it, even click that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any of the updates like this or any other Summit Racing build series. I'm Justin with Summit Racing. Thanks for watching.